Hello and welcome to this channel. My name is Victoria and today's video is the continuation of our series of collagenosis and it will be about panarteritis nodosa, a vasculitis of middle-sized arteries, especially of the kidneys, nervous system, locomotor system and gastrointestinal tract. The affected arteries are inflamed and necrotic and not like nodules form in the vessel walls. These nodules also give the disease the name panarteritis nodosa. Characteristic for the disease is the infiltration of the vessels by inflammatory cells, for example leukocytes or neutrophils, also the proliferation of the tunica intima, the innermost layer of the vessel wall, which may lead over time to an occlusion of the vessel. The etiology is unclear until today but it is considered to most likely be an autoimmune disease, as the other collagenosis also. One third of patients also suffer from hepatitis B, and the HB antigens can be found in the lesions. The disease is rare, but severe. Untypical for the group of collagenosis, men are approximately three times more frequently affected than women. The disease presents with a series of different symptoms, resulting from the insufficient oxygen supply due to damage to the vessels. Nervous system symptoms include mononeuritis simplex, asymmetric polyneuropathy and sensory and motor defects, especially affecting the median, ulnar and fibular nerves. Kidney symptoms manifest with the development of kidney failure, hypertension, and oliguria. Abdominal symptoms are pain, malabsorption of nutrients, which in turn leads to further symptoms and also the formation of aneurysms of the supplying vessels. If you are further interested in aneurysms, you can also see our video to that. Just click on the banner above. The skin may present with libido reticularis, ulcers, nodules and gangrene. As the coronary arteries might get occluded, heart failure can develop. Also systemic symptoms can be observed, which are usually a general feeling of unwell being, weight loss and fever. Patients describe it as being sick without really knowing what is wrong. The diagnosis is done by thorough anamnesis and organ specific examinations depending on the symptomatic profile the patients present with. Also blood tests can be done, in which CRP and erythrocyte sedimentation rate are increased. Approximately 50% of patients present with increased rheumatoid factor and or decreased complement factors. Another diagnosing method is to take a biopsy. Samples may be obtained from muscles, skin or nerves. Also the proof of hepatitis B can be an indicator for the presence of the disease. Without treatment, panarteritis nodosa is most often lethal within five years of onset of symptoms. Renal involvement or renal damage is essential for a patient's prognosis, so the close monitoring of its function is important. A patient's prognosis is improved and the life expectancy increased when glucocorticoids and zyglophosphamide are given. In patients with hepatitis B, antiviral therapy is necessary. Without treatment, the ischemia of vital organs will lead to death, so close observation and early diagnosis are of uttermost importance. I hope this video was helpful. Leave a comment and don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss any new videos. Stay healthy and tuned in.